Haley Scott De Maria learned to swim when she was three. She won her first trophy at age eight and the hearts of the Notre Dame family at 18. As a freshman on the women's swim team, she was aboard the bus that skidded off the Indiana Toll Road on a wintry night in 1992, taking the lives of her two friends and leaving her paralyzed in the frozen snow. With a fractured spine and damaged spinal cord, she lay in the hospital as the medical staff prepared her for life in a wheelchair. The reports were scary, and we weren't sure what was going to happen. There is a window of some time, like, it might be 48 hours, to say, you know, if you get some recovery back in this time, um, there's a good chance, but the window had passed. So we were all in the, okay, is this going to be really sad? And, but we didn't know. As the days passed and streams of visitors came from campus, a miracle happened. She wiggled her toe. With grit and determination, Haley vowed to not only walk again, but to compete on the Notre Dame swim team in honor of Megan Wheeler and Colleen Hemp, the friends she lost. Just wait, because I will. <laughs> and there was never a second of doubt about, is she gonna recover? Yes, is she gonna go back to Notre Dame? Yes, is she gonna swim again? Yes. Um, and who's gonna help her do this? Her teammates, Megan and Colleen. They were major, major sleepers. She had to relearn how to walk, she had to relearn how to stand up, she had to relearn everything. After five surgeries and being on the brink of death, Haley joined her team at practice less than a year after the accident. Then in October of 1993, with Rod still attached to her spine, she raced once again. Everybody was here, the whole place was filled. And we had tears in our eyes from that moment on, from the time she left the block, it was like, oh my God, Haley did it. Whether she won the race or not, didn't matter. It just mattered that she did it, that she did win the race, which made it even better. This was absolutely crazy. I think what Haley teaches us is life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you react to it. She's my hero. Her courage and attitude has been an inspiration to me and to millions of other people. For all those who long to believe that miracles happen with faith, meet Haley Scott De Maria. Dame, Katie Scott, Dame Maria, to deliver our Thank you, Father John. Members of the Board of Trustees, fellow honorees, Father Jenkins, honored guests, family, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2012. Welcome and thank you. It is a true privilege to share this day with you, to be honored with a degree as you are honored with your degrees, and for me to join the class of 2012. When Father John called to invite me to be your speaker, he first mentioned that the university wanted to give me an honorary degree. That news alone was so overwhelming and unexpected that I actually missed the part where he invited me to give the commencement address. <laughs> it wasn't until I read a copy of the press release that I realized I was to be your speaker. <laughs> Over the next several days, I thought to myself many times, wow, I can't believe Notre Dame invited me to be their speaker. Perhaps some of you thought the same thing. <laughs> As I stand before you today, we have many things in common. The list of those who have stood this podium before me is certainly impressive, and I am honored to be added to that list. However, there are two words I can share with you that few before me can. I understand. I understand what it's like to sit where you sit as graduates of the University of Notre Dame. I understand that while football weekends are awesome, it can sometimes be annoying to have the quads in the bookstore crowded with alumni, people like me, and soon you. <laughs> I understand the fun and challenges of parietals, Duloc, and Pig Tostal. <laughs> I understand what it's like to lose a classmate in a very tragic way. 
As graduates, all Notre Dame alumni celebrate today with you. But the class of 2012 and my undergraduate class of 1995 share sadness as well. The loss of life at a young age is an emotional experience that will stay with you long after you graduate. I understand. You will find as you navigate through life, the words I understand are very powerful when they are sincere and honest. These words carry the strongest meaning when spoken by someone who has lived through a similar experience. I also understand that today is not about my story and me. I have no political agenda or platform to promote. Today I share with you how my experience as a student and an alumna of Notre Dame relates to you, your lives, and the future experiences you will have as graduates of this university. It is often said that college is the best four years of your life, or five if you're an RP. <laughs> but I disagree. I promise you that while your time here at Notre Dame has been special and unique, it is not all downhill after today. The best is yet to come. <laughs> But you are prepared for your next adventure, and you are prepared well. Look around you, at your roommate, your classmates, perhaps a teammate or a professor. Think of how much you have learned from them. They have made you a better person, as you have made them. That is who we are at Notre Dame. As anyone who's experienced the student section at the Purcell Pavilion or the Compton Family Arena or here in this stadium knows, our strongest trait is our community. Though each of us has to find our own way, none of us at Notre Dame does this alone. You have learned from the best just by being here. The most significant lessons, however, might not necessarily have occurred in the classroom. Academics are important and we celebrate that today. I have a degree in history, which is wildly popular with my children as I explain the historical significance of every location we visit. But in education is so much more than textbooks going to class and taking exams. As a member of the Notre Dame family, I learned what is truly important in life, gratitude and making a difference. It is easy to make a living. It is more gratifying to make a difference. I'm all asked. I'm often asked, do you wish your accident had never happened? And believe it or not, this question does not elicit a simple answer. Yes, I wish every day that my two teammates had the opportunity to sit where you sit. But I also know that everything I have, my family, my children, my friendships, and everything I am has evolved from this tragic event and my time here at Notre Dame. So the answer is a paradox. Yes, I wish it had never happened. But I am so grateful for the blessings that I have learned, how I've grown, and the opportunities I have to make a difference. This is perhaps the greatest lesson I learned here at Notre Dame, that life may not take you down the path you planned, but with the foundation you have laid here at Notre Dame, it can still be a very good path. We can't change the past. There are events in our lives over which we have no control, but what we can control is how we react to them. I truly believe this. I truly believe that each of us has a choice every day, that each of us can wake up tomorrow and find something negative in our lives on which to focus, but that each of us can also wake up tomorrow and celebrate the blessings in our lives. This is certainly easier to do on some days more than others. But even in our darkest days, we can choose the brighter path, the one of gratitude. This is more than the glass half full or half empty. This is a choice. And I challenge you to make this choice every day. Do you wake up tomorrow upset that you have graduated and you're leaving Notre Dame? Or do you wake up tomorrow celebrating your accomplishments and looking forward to the bright future that you have? That is your choice. It is all a matter of perspective. Perspective is a really important word to me. I learned perspective from a man named Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve was a famous actor in the 1970s and 80s. 